somebody else a little over a week ago. I told you about a restaurant in our small town of uh, Holton, Illinois, called Hoylton. Hoylton. Kretzers mm-hmm. that serves 2,000 pounds of crab legs or more every week. And especially um, there's an event that's going to happen tonight. The captain of the USA Paraplegic Olympic rugby team is from our hometown, and there will be a welcome home celebration. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Chuck That's awesome. Melton is the name of the captain. All right. Congratulations to him. Well, There's absolutely. one thing to do in uh, Oilton. the southern Illinois area, but I know of something else. This 51st annual rendezvous. I love a rendezvous, right? I mean, oh, yeah. When you say rendezvous, you just know it's going to be a good time. <laughs> rendezvous at the Fort Deschartes State Historic Site. We not only have Andy Waterman, Communications Director with Illinois South Tourism, but we have Jason Dunsing, who is part of the planning committee, planning committee chair, actually. Welcome to the show, Jason and Andy. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us. So let's talk about the history of this rendezvous. I mean, you guys have been doing this for 50 years. How did it start? Uh, it started with just a, uh, a bunch of like-minded individuals that were interested in, in local history and uh, uh, muzzleloader shooting, uh, flintlock muzzleloader shooting. Uh, uh, just a handful of folks, about 20 folks, got together back in 1970 uh, and they came up with the idea, and in 71, then the state picked it up and made an actual event, and uh, we kind of went from there. So. Wow. And I know there's all kinds of, like, artisans and crafts, food, music, and events, but we're talking 18th century crafts. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what You'll kind of things will we from, see? Yeah. Yeah, from wood turning to uh, actual uh, there'll be gun building demonstration there. Uh, actually, it'll have his tools displayed. Uh, to basket making, uh, to pewter uh, casting, uh, just all sorts of uh, fun 18th century demonstration crafts and demonstrations like that. Uh, <clears throat> rendezvous, Fort de Chart, uh, Prairie du Rocher. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a certain vibe and a language here. Yes. Yes, you would be, and that's uh, all French. It's uh, a very heavily French-influenced area. Uh, The French French actually came through, well, they established the first fort of four different fort de sharks down there in 1720, hence the reason we're going to be talking about or probably talking about here shortly. Uh, But then uh, in 1753, after the first three forts, to come to the the uh, Mississippi River bottoms, they were wooden stockade forts, and so they didn't last that long. They, the the French government decided to build what is partially reconstructed there today, which is a uh, uh, about a four acre interior stone fort, and uh, that, like I said, the the rear wall, the land gate, has all been uh, uh, redone and for everybody to see, and it is a uh, it is. A very spectacular thing when you're driving down that way and you <clears throat> and you pull up and see this partially reconstructed stone fort sitting out in the middle of the river bottoms. It's uh, it's pretty awe inspiring. Now, is the fort typically open to the public, or do you guys just open it for the rendezvous? No, it's actually open uh, Wednesdays through Sunday from nine to four thirty. There's a wonderful museum down there. Uh, and just uh, our site staff down there does a wonderful job of keeping the place groomed. Um, lots of area to walk around, come down, bring your family, uh, have a picnic down there. It's, uh, it's a wonderful place to get away. Very quaint and quiet. Like I said, it's, uh, we're out in the middle of the river bottoms, four miles outside of Prairie Road through there. And uh, it's a very, very nice setting, very relaxing setting down there, even yeah. when there's not an event going on. I was just kind of looking up rendezvous, and a rendezvous is a particular kind of celebration. Yes, it's a uh, it's a tradition where fur trappers, traders would get together uh, after a, a long uh, time off on their own and uh, come back to trade their wares and to obviously swap stories, celebrate life. Uh, that's kind of the, um, obviously the theme for our event. Uh, we do, uh, we have a lot of activities, a lot of, uh, a lot of demonstrators, as we mentioned before, a lot of musical entertainment. We have musical entertainment, uh, uh, bagpipe, fife, and drum corps. One of the only places in the St. Louis metro area that you're going to see all that in one spot. 
we have uh, groups coming as far as from Lafayette, Indiana, that come perform for us, uh, wow. some of our military fife, uh, fife and drum corps. So. I also saw that there's 18th century street performers. What do they do? Yes, yes they do juggling. They do uh, uh, just some uh, some magic tricks, stuff like that. Very entertaining folks. And uh, they do shows, not scheduled shows. They just do as the crowd appears around them. They'll they'll fire up a show, and uh, and do their uh, do their street performing um, for everybody to see. It's it's really it is really neat, really entertaining, really How educational big is as well. Prairie de Rocher. Prairie de Rocher is a town of six hundred and fifty people. Pretty small, pretty small community down there in the in the Mississippi River bottoms. Uh, a matter of fact, they are. Uh, they were established in 1722, so they will be celebrating. They've got some big doings coming up here in a, in a, a year or so. Uh, they'll be celebrating their 300th anniversary here oh, so very soon. So the rendezvous has to make a pretty big impact on the community. Where does I mean? Is it free to attend? Is there a ticket price? And you know, what is the impact? It is actually. Uh, um, uh, uh, it is free to attend for the public, okay. and it is a five dollar uh, uh, parking charge for vehicles and ten dollar parking fee for buses. Uh, otherwise, free to attend for the general public. Awesome! I mean, really, it's like you're stepping back in time with the cannons and is. campfires, yeah. and yeah. you know, a parade of colorful uniforms there at the Fort Deschartes State Historic Site. Is there something that year after year that you look forward to uh, when the rendezvous rolls around? Uh, just seeing a lot of familiar faces. We get we get reenactors that come in. We generally get between uh, between a thousand and twelve hundred reenactors that attend the event. Uh, and uh, folks that come from all across the country and uh, uh, gives me a chance. I grew up reenacting. I grew up there at the fort. My dad was the site manager there for 45 years, and uh, he had retired back in 2015. So being from there and growing up there, I get to, you know, I, I, as the events roll around, I get to see a lot of folks I don't get to see on a regular basis So yep. and, uh, and catch up with them. So that's that's one of the things I look forward to. Uh, just from experience talking to other visitors, they love the music. They love the uh, the opening and closing colors that we do ceremonies uh, where we do a, a flag raising and flag lowering ceremony. Uh, and that's all done in the military style, the 18th century military style. Uh, they really enjoy that. They really enjoy the period music we have there, and the food is obviously a big a big draw as well. We have. Uh, some folks that that do root beer down there, and people come from miles away just to get the root beer. So, now, lots Jason, of, you said that do, lots to see. you were uh, a reenactor for many years, and I've always wondered. You have, you said a thousand people coming. Do you guys really stay in those tents overnight? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of the folks and I, we do them as well. We call we do what we call treks, where we'll pack everything on our on our back that we're going to use for the weekend and we'll just take off out in the woods and, uh, uh, and stay out in the woods and, and start a fire with flint and steel. You know, if it's during squirrel hunting season, we'll take our flint lock muzzleloader. So we'll go, uh, squirrel hunting or, you know, whatever, maybe tie up a, a piece of sinew on a stick and, and use a hand forged, uh, uh, hook to try to catch some fish and and uh it's you know it's it really puts life in perspective when you uh when you step back in your predecessor's shoes like that i it's, bet it does uh, but you guys aren't serving squirrel at the rendezvous are you no no that's not on the menu this year okay <laughs> so i'm uh french fur trappers what what did people used to trap right there on the on the river um, what furs are we talking about, and uh, are we using muskets, or you know, did you catch a beaver in some sort of you know beaver trap? Oh, you you actually hit your first question. You hit the nail on the head there. A beaver was the number one uh, a sought after pelt in, in our region here. Um, the beaver it wasn't for the actual leather; it was for the fur. The fur made uh, made very very fine felt. And then they would use that felt to make hats, and so that—that's the reason why the beaver was the most sought-after hmm. uh, animal for trapping. Uh, 
they did have obviously they did have iron. They had uh, they had iron uh, traps uh, similar to your modern day traps that uh, the trappers use today, uh, and so that would have been uh, the majority of uh, of uh, the tools they would use to uh, to catch the the beaver for uh, during trapping. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting. Have, yeah, go ahead. They did. They did use, as you mentioned, they did use flintlock muskets. Uh, musket is more of a military term. Um, uh, those are, would have been a smooth bore, uh, like if you imagine a shotgun. That's what a, a musket is. Um, others would have had rifles, and those would have been heavier barrels, and they would have rifling in them, more accurate to uh, to a distance. Um, and they would have used that that type of equipment, weapons for uh, hunting all of your large game. You know, your buffalo, your your elk. We did have buffalo and elk in this area uh, back in those days. Deer, turkey, uh, you name it, they they hunted it, hunted it, hunted it all. And I guess we can learn more about it this weekend at the 51st Annual Rendezvous at the Fort Deschartes State Historic Site in Prairie du Rocher. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for joining us. Thank you so much, and I wanted to make sure uh, the dates actually are the 11th and 12th of September. I just oh, thank to throw you, that thank out you, there. thank you. Yes, yeah. I, all right. I greatly appreciate you folks having me on here, and uh, hope to see everybody at the show. Absolutely. Well, again, the 51st annual rendezvous at the Fort Deschartes State Historic Site, awesome September 11th and 12th. Prairie du Rocher is about an hour, maybe a little less than that, from downtown St. Louis, and a couple of things that uh, Jason left out. I mean, there's shooting competitions, there's military drills, dancing, of course, music, food, trades of the 18th century style goods. Did I miss anything, Andy? I mean, there's, a, there's a ton of stuff there uh, on the 11th and 12th. And um, one thing that we definitely need to touch on is the planning and management is done completely by volunteers for this wow. event. So a huge shout out to them. For, for putting on this event because it's one of the biggest oh. ones in our area every year. And they actually haven't been able to do it the last couple of years. 19, they were flooded out. Mm. 20, obviously the pandemic. So they are really chomping at the bit to get that, that in. Coming back with a force. Mm -hmm. So we usually wrap things up, Andy, with some food for thought. Yes, let's do it. What do you have? So we have done uh, one in our eastern region, Moonshine. Mm -hmm. One in our central region, which was Kretzer's. And yes. Oregon. So let's do one in our western region. Okay. A town you're familiar with very well, Belco. Yes. Uh, there's a uh, barbecue joint there called Hicks. Have you been to Hicks? I have not been to Hicks. So it's just south of the square, and they have a food challenge. And this is up your alley, Josh. Okay. Because it is a barbecue nacho challenge. Uh, mm. Yes. Yes. Barbecue nacho, barbecue chicken, barbecue beef, barbecue, barbecue a lot of meats. Oh. It is seven and a half pounds, <gasps> and you have to finish it in an hour. If you do, meals on them, and you get a free T-shirt. But it has brisket, chicken, and pork on it, with all your your jalapenos, your sour cream, all the other fixings, and they top it with a rib. Oh, Whoa. just for, you know. Just like a cherry on top. Yes. It's a rib on top. Hicks Barbecue. Hicks Barbecue in Belleville. I've, uh, if you want to uh, check it out, um, it is they literally bring it out to you on a pizza tray because it's so it's, much. It's that big. It is. My wife doesn't think barbecue sauce goes on nachos. I, I, we almost got divorced that day. Oh. I don't want to say this as, as, as she's listening, but your wife's wrong. Uh, yeah, we almost. It was a. <laughs> There were other things involved as well, as you can imagine, but it was, it was the... It got ugly. It was the rib on top, mm -hmm. it, it, so to speak. <laughs> Love a barbecue nacho. Oh, and they are really good. All right, I think we're going to have to uh, make a trip to Belleville. It's not far away. No, it is not. Andy, it's always great catching up. You um, give us just another thing to do all the time on our list, and of course that rendezvous is September 11th. And 12th, you can learn more about everything going on, IllinoisSouth.org. Thanks, guys.